horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on. Silver! Hurry, big fellow! I'm Silver! Oh! It happened in Kernville one blistering hot day in midsummer. A dark complexioned woman, her features half hidden behind a heavy veil, rented a Surrey at the livery stable. She drove south on Main Street until she reached the shade of a large cottonwood tree. Whoa! Ho there! Whoa! There she was joined by two men. Lenny Crater, whose nervous voice betrayed a constant state of inner fear, and Big Mike Monahan, the woman's husband. Hey, here, here she is, Mike. Hello, Marge. Have any trouble? Why should there be any trouble? The yokels in this town don't know they're alive. Yeah, but you never can tell when somebody might... Quiet, Lenny. Uh, how about Cheeto and the saddle horses? Cheeto's all set. He'll be waiting for us about a half mile south. Uh, don't you have to signal him, Mike? Yeah, I got some brush piled up back of the ridge. I'll go light it now. You two wait here. Marge, you think Mike's suspicious? Of course not. <laughs> Ain't he working with his wife and his best friend? Yeah, but I don't... You're, you're supposed to drive this rig, Lenny. I'm going to sit in the back seat like a lady. Now, help me up. Yeah, up you go. <laughs> Got that note written to the sheriff? You can mail it tonight in Fenton. It'll be delivered here tomorrow morning. I wrote the note, all right. Good, but... nothing else to do till Mike gets back. Boy, ain't you scared? Say, as long as we're killing time... Uh, thought I had a deck of cards here in my handbag. Marge! Yep, yeah, here they are. Might as well see how the odds stack up on this caper we're going How can you sit there fooling with cards when both of us might be dead within the next five minutes? That's what I'm trying to find out, Lenny. You know, I'll bet I'd be a real good as a fortune teller. I'd get me one of those big crystal Suppose balls Suppose Big and... Mike gets wise. Suppose, Suppose he learns... shut up. Here he comes. Everything's set. That brush pile's making a lot of smoke, so Cheeto will see the signal all right. What you doing, Marge? <laughs> Telling fortunes? Yeah, <laughs> Look, there's the king of diamonds. That's you, and it means money. Sure, sure it does. <laughs> means 80000 in gold. The railroad payroll we're going to borrow from the Kernville Bank. And there's the eight of spades right next to it. Ah, good. Eight's my lucky number. Ah, this is going to be a cinch. Now, listen. Here's the way we'll do it. Lenny, you drive. Marge and I'll sit in the back seat like a couple of hayseeds. Yeah. 
pull up in front of the bank and keep your eyes peeled while we're inside. Oh, sure. Marge, we'll go in and walk straight to the cashier's cage. How about your mask? Suppose somebody might recognize I'll you. I'll keep my hat down over my eyes and put on the mask at the last minute. Uh, you do the talking at first. Make it sound like an old woman. Oh, well, that's easy. And then cover me when I brace the cashier. You got a gun? Right here in my bag. And I can handle it without anybody knowing it's there. All right. But no gun play unless you have to. I'll use mine to keep the yokels scared. You understand? Sure. What are we waiting for? Nothing. Let's go, Lenny. Here, get up. Get up there. Come on, get up. So, my husband and I figured we'd start one of them things you call a, a bank account. Oh, of course, ma'am. Right over to that window. Cashier will take care of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, mister. Not at all. That's my business. The mask, Mike. You'd better be sure. I've got it. Uh, didn't I hear you folks say you wanted to open it? The only thing we want, Bub, is that canvas sack right there. <laughs> one that's got the payroll in it. Mask. And a gun. Hand it Wait. over before I bless you to kingdom come. Here, here, here it is. Good. Now we'll get out Hold of here. Hold up. Bank robber. Are you this crazy, bank robber? You can't get away with this. Watch, watch it, Marge. They're blocking the door. Oh. No, they're not. Head for it. I'll cover you. All right, Lenny. Whip up that sleeve. Line out, you flea. Get up. Get up there. Get up. Get up there. Come on, there. Waiting for us. There's Cheeto on the saddle. Oh, 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 oh. Good. You, you made it. Cheeto, sure. A little bit too much shooting, but we made it. There'll be lawmen right behind us, Mike. Sure, but not for long. We'll lose them. Now, mount up, all of you. Steady. Steady. Cheeto, give that team a crack with a whip. Get them out of here. Get along there. Get. That ought to keep the law off our trail for a little while. Now, we're split up. Lenny, you head for Fenton. Lay low to Lamar. Yeah. Marge, you line out for Clear Creek. Sure. Cheeto and I'll cut back to Sundance Canyon. I'll hide this stuff from Cirque East again. Tomorrow afternoon, we meet at the other end of the canyon. Understand? Uh, Mike, where are you going to hide it? Uh, the gold, I mean. I don't know. The usual place, I guess, under the cabin. Why? I, uh, no reason. I just wondered. Let me worry about that. We'll all get our split tomorrow. Now dig your Bronx and ride. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up. He's outside, Sheriff. All mounted and ready. Good. You figure we might cut some new sign on that Monahan cutter? I don't know. Got a tip. This letter came in the morning's mail. Letter? What do you mean? Well, uh, listen. It says, if you want to catch Big Mike, who pulled that hold up in your town yesterday, be at the west end of Sundance Canyon this afternoon. And it's signed, a friend. Hmm. I wonder if it's on the level. I can't tell. Sometimes crooks fall out, then they call in the law. Well, there's one sure way to find out. Come on. Steady, boys, steady. All right, boys, we're heading for Sundance Canyon. Get up there. Ho, 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 ho. Can't understand it, Cheeto. Marge and Lenny should have been here an hour ago. Can't tell, Mike. Maybe they got really. Hey, what the. Lawman, behind that ridge, up ahead. You're surrounded, Mike. Ten of my men have got both of you under their sights. 
trap. We rode into a trap. Slide out of those saddles and get your hands up. Got to shoot our way out. That's the only way. All right, boys. Close in on them. Not while I can sling lead, you dirty law dog. <laughs> Slug in my shoulder. I can't. Run for it, Cheeto. Run. I'm down. Maybe you can get away. I'll try it, Mike. Get up. Get up. We got one of them, Sheriff. What? It's Big Mike. Yeah. Some of you boys trail the other one. Right, Sheriff. Right. You're not hurt bad, Monahan. And you're going to have a long time to get well. Where's the gold you got from Kernville Bank? You nailed me. But you won't get the money. Where is it? Where'd you hide it? Listen, law dog. That's something neither you nor anybody else will ever find out. Quiet. Quiet in the court. Mike Monaghan, you've been tried and convicted of bank robbery. Therefore, it's the sentence of this court that you shall spend the rest of your natural life as an inmate of territorial prison. They gave him life, Marge. But a lot of good that does us. We still haven't got the money. If Mike didn't hide it under the cabin, it... Well, it must be someplace near there. Yeah, but where? How are we going to find it? We'll go back to Kernville. You can pretend you're a prospector. Search Sundance Canyon from one end to the other. That might take a lot of time. What will you be doing? I don't know. I have to earn a living some way. Out. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What? Change my name to Madame Zampa. Get a crystal ball and become a fortune teller. Pretty far north for a horse wrangler like you. What's your name, cowboy? Cheeto. Cheeto, eh? <laughs> Figuring on staying very long around these parts? I don't know. Things are... I mean, the weather got kind of hot down south. So I headed this way. Hmm. Figured on going back? Sure, I'll go back. Someday. You see, there's something waiting for me down there. But it'll be safe for quite a spell. <laughs> Ten years passed. Ten long and uneventful years, during which the Kernville bank robbery and everything connected with it was almost forgotten. Then, on another warm midsummer day, the Lone Ranger and Tonto pulled their horses to a halt at the western end of Sundance Canyon. Oh, 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 no trail leading that way. We better leave the horses here and steady, big fella. <laughs> Come on, Toto. Uh. Look, that man in front of the cabin. He's been shot. He can hardly walk. Uh. But he's doing his best to get into the cabin before. No sign of anyone else. We heard two guns. Maybe somebody shoot, fella, and leave plenty fast. No matter how it happened, that man in the cabin needs help. Come on. As he's got on the ground, he must have dropped it. Brace your nosy hombres. Get him up high. Behind us, Toto. Uh. Uh, don't turn around. First one of you that moves is going to stop a hunk of lead. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. Facing the open door of a small cabin, the Lone Ranger and Tonto are surprised by a sharp command from somewhere behind them. I said reach or I'll shoot. Do what he says, Tonto. We'll stall for time. Uh-huh. There, that's better. Now you meddling critters get what's coming to you. Yes, it's always easier to shoot a man in the back. The door, Tonto, we'll jump for it. Uh-huh. I don't care who you are, where you come from. I'm going to... Jump! Hit- uh-huh. Keep down, Tonto. This rain, some of that lead might split the door. Uh-huh. Sun's in his eyes. He can't see very well. I'll use the window. Good. That saves me the trouble of breaking it myself. Oh, my head! And you're lucky I'm not trying to kill you. Look. Fellow dropped gun. Run away plenty fast. Yes. I think he realizes he started something he couldn't finish. Maybe we shouldn't have let him get away, but on the other hand... Fellow on bunk in corner. Him hurt bad. Oh, that's right. Almost forgotten about him. Oh, These wounds are bad. Eat some water, Toto, and we'll try to help. No, no, it wouldn't do any good. I, I'm done for. You, you're wearing a mask. Glad it was an owl who had found me instead of the law. Is that so? Big Mike, he's doing a life stretch in prison. I just came down from up north. When I found out about Lenny Crater and Marge, I, I wrote to Mike. He smuggled a letter back, sent me a map so I could. Find the money. It, it's easy. Just eight by eight and... Uh... He's dead, Tonto. Ah. You think him tell truth? I don't know. I'm going to find out. The looks of the ground all around the outside of this cabin. Somebody's been doing a lot of digging in the last few years. Ah. Hello. I want you to trail the man who tried to kill us. He must be Lenny Crater. Uh-uh. Me do it. I'll bury this man. See if I can find anything around here. Meet me just outside Kernville in about two hours. Uh-huh. Marge. Lenny. Marge, Marge, I found it. Found what? The money we've been searching for oh, for the last God. ten years. Look, look, here's a map. I got from Cheeto this afternoon after I drilled him. So you got Cheeto, huh? Yeah. Now, here, here, see? Simple when you understand how Mike figured. You remember how we always used to say eight was his lucky number? Well, it's just eight paces south, and then then eight more, and uh, (laughs) you see? So that's where he planted it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there's no use waiting any longer now. I'll go to the livery stable and rent your horse, and we'll ride up there tonight. Then with 80000 in gold, we can head for any place. <laughs> Mexico. Wait a minute, Lenny. I, I've got a business here. I can't leave all of a sudden Business? Without... You call this fake Madame Zampa stuff with that crystal ball a business? Maybe. You know, Lenny, I, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Yeah? You're thinking about what? You, me, and Mike. How we double-crossed him and... What'd he do to us if he ever got out of prison? Oh, don't worry about that. Mike's doing life, and the law's not going to turn him loose. I hope not. Another thing that's got me worried is... is that crystal ball. Crystal ball? What do you mean? Well, maybe all fortune tellers aren't fakes like I am. Maybe there is something to it. I can see things in the crystal. Any honest, I can. What? After ten years of faking, you're starting to believe in your own line of bunk? Seen Mike in the crystal lots of times. Seen his face just as plain as I can see yours. Ah, now. you're going spooky. It's a good thing we're getting out of here before Plenty. you. Plenty. Wait a minute. Hey, what's wrong? I could have sworn I heard the outer door open and close just now. Oh, wait, the window. No, there's nobody on the street. Just an Indian walking the other way. I yeah, Marge, you're it. going batty. All redskins look alike anyway. Now, you get your stuff packed, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Then we'll head for Sundance Canyon, and from there to Easy Street for the rest of our lives. (laughs) How about it? All right, Lenny. I'll be ready. At that same moment, in an upper cell of territorial prison a few miles away, Big Mike Monahan turned to his cellmate. Ten years of slime and sweat. Ten years of work. All because I made the mistake of trusting two people. My wife and... 
My best friend. How do you know? Didn't Cheeto write me a letter to say just that in different words? I told him he could have the money. That didn't mean anything to me now. But I'm getting out of here tonight. Ah, me follow him. Go to little house in Kernville. Him talk to woman there. Her name, Madame Zampa. She had big glass ball on table. Look at it all time. Her make talk about sea things. Mm, evidently, Mrs. Monaghan is a crystal grazer. She calls herself Madame Zampa. Her say, her see big Mike all time. It make her plenty worried. It's probably her conscience as much as it is a crystal ball. Mike Monaghan is in territorial prison. I... What matter? Nothing, Kimosabe. I just remembered that Mike and I are about the same size and build. That he used to wear a mask, something like mine, on most of his robberies. I wonder if... Leave your horse here, Toto. We'll walk into Kernville. Uh, can we catch Lenny Crater? I hope so. The first thing I'm going to do is have my fortune told. <laughs> Who is it? I'd like to have my fortune told. No, I, I've closed up for the night. I'll pay anything you ask. $10, 15 20 Well, all 50. right, but, but it'll have to be a short reading. The light's rather dim in here, isn't it? That makes crystal reading easier. But you don't have to keep your hat pulled down over your face. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm sure of that. Uh, right over here. Take the chair on that side of the table. Do you tell the past as well as the future? Sometimes I can, but... Uh, What's wrong? I, uh, nothing. It must be the way you wear your hat down over your face. I, I used to know a man who had the same habit, but it was ten years ago. He was my husband. Uh, is that right? Marge? Uh, the mask. Mike. I guess old habits are pretty hard to hide. Mike, I... Your voice, it's different. Ten years in prison can change a lot of things, Marge. How, how did you get out? Make a break? It's been done before. Oh, my, Mike, if you broke out of prison, won't the law be trailing? Maybe. You see, I wanted to have you and Lenny with me when I pick up that money from the bank job. The money? Yes, I didn't hide it in the regular place. I thought as long as it was $80,000 and eight was my lucky number, I'd use that. What do you mean? And it was a pretty good idea. Eight feet from the end of the cabin, and eight feet straight up the trunk of a hollow pine tree. Yeah, but, but do you really want me to go with You're you? You're still Mrs. Monaghan, aren't you, Marge? Why, sure. Sure I am. I... <laughs> Eight o'clock. Guess my lucky number's still working, huh, Marge? Of course, Mike. What are you going to do? I have a couple of horses staked down at the edge of town. I'll get them and then come back. All right, I... All right, you do that, Mike. I... Remember, I'm coming back for you. Adios, Mother. Lenny, Lenny, why don't you hurry? If you don't get back pretty soon, he'll be here. All set, Marge. I've got... Lenny! Mike's out of prison. Busted out. He was here just a few minutes ago. Mike! Are you sure? He knows everything about being double-crossed. He was just playing with me like a cat with a mouse. Oh, what can we do? There's only one thing to do. We went to the edge of town to pick up some saddle horses. Follow him, Lenny. And kill him. Kill him before he kills us both. Yeah, but what... Can hurry, we... hurry, Lenny. Uh, in the hell, I'm going to... Grab him, Toto. Let me go. Let me go. Take him out of our camp, Toto. Then first thing in the morning, we'll turn him and the stolen money over to the sheriff. Uh, that came us happy. Yes, Toto. Uh, what about woman? Her crook, too. I know she is. But unfortunately, the law has no proof against her. There are no man-made laws to take care of people like her. Come on, Toto. Well, 
Well, who are you? Well, I work down at the railroad station, ma'am. Your telegram just came in. Guess it's for you. It's addressed to Mrs. Mike Monahan, Madam Zampa. Is that you? Telegram? Let me see it. I... I... Sure. I don't know. Hank over the telegraph station said he delivered a telegram to this man in Zampa's house, and the woman fainted. Come on. There she is. Stretched out on the floor. Hmm. Huh. Never can tell what a woman. Uh, she. Uh, she. Uh, she hasn't fainted, Sheriff. This woman's dead. Well, I'll be. Any sign of bullet wounds? Not a one. Looks to me like she died of a heart attack or something like that. Hmm. I wonder why. The telegram. She still got it in her hand. Yeah. Let me see it. Yeah. Well, I'll be. This is addressed to Mrs. Mike Monahan. Do you suppose this Madame Zample, who's been living here all these years, was really Big Mike's wife? I don't know. I never kept... What's the telegram say? Well, listen. It's signed by the warden of Territorial Prison. And it says, Mrs. Mike Monahan, it is my unpleasant but necessary duty to inform you that your husband was killed tonight when he attempted to escape from Territorial Prison. He died at 8 o'clock. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>